Welcome to the second edition of the Daily Stampede Breaks Down Film, Film Room as we like to call it. We have uh, myself, Robert Stieg, and the wonderful, the knowledgeable, the beautiful Seth Varnador here uh, on this very special occasion to break down a little bit of the worst loss in USF history. <laughs> so, yeah. Seth, I, there might not be that many positives, but uh, you know, what, it, what, what from this Notre Dame game can we take away and say, yeah, we got, we got, some, we got some gripe here. We got something to go with. Um... <laughs> There's not much. I mean, the, it was, the game ended up being so bad that you had to cancel your next game. Maybe that's the positive. You didn't have to play FAU, and you get two weeks to get ready for Cincinnati. That is true. But, uh, there, <clears throat> I mean, they had some explosive plays on offense, so that was good to see. They just couldn't finish drives and be consistent enough on offense. Defense, it was just kind of a bad matchup. I don't think they really had a chance, um, especially once Notre Dame decided, all right, let's just go, like, total bully ball and – Crowd the box, and uh, now you now we just create a, a physical game instead of uh, letting you use your speed to try to create confusion. So good, good job on Notre Dame's part, but uh, yeah, there's not too much to take from this. Much like last year, there wasn't a ton to take from Wisconsin, so it's kind of similar, I think. But let's go ahead and <clears throat> look at a few plays. Some good, some bad, just to kind of look and see, you know, what happened. So, all right, so this is the first play of the game here. This is something Notre Dame did in the previous game. But just from this tight formation, and it looks like you got you got a tailback, you got three tight ends, and you have a receiver here. They're going to do play action. He's going to run a go route and just try to clear this out. And then you're going to have an out route come underneath it with the play action that comes. You'll see. I'm thinking run. I just kind of let it go by me here. And that's how he got so open on the first play. Could be a flood concept by Notre Dame. So he's trying to come up right here and play physical. He's going to get cleared out by the go route. He just slips him. And then it's too late by then. Good throw to Tommy Trimble. Sounds like a like he's in an '80s hair band. Toured with Herbie Hancock, I think. Um, and then Notre Dame. This is kind of just the physical side of it. They're going to run an interesting scheme here, where they're just going to down block. This is called a G scheme. You pull the front side guard, kick out, and they're also going to add a lead portion to it. You know, when they decide to play like this, there's not much you can do. Now, you do see some penetration here, and that was something. It wasn't consistent, but when they when the USF moved a little bit up front, they were able to get some penetration of this. Blake Green there getting in and almost blowing off the play. But the back's able to bounce it, and then he gets a good block on the edge here. Kick by the guard. He's up inside, and the back's able to cut off those blocks. And here's a touchdown. He said does a pretty good job, really. And I thought they did a good job against the pass for the most part. That's what I was hoping they try to get Notre Dame to pass a little more. I even mentioned it last week. I said it sounded counterintuitive, but make Ian Book beat you. And they just couldn't do it. And then he when you get his legs. And then when you get these opportunities, you gotta make plays. So I believe that's Mr. Smoke there. So you just gotta make you gotta make plays when you get a chance. And he's done that. It's not his nickname's not Smoke because he's easy to run through. He's, he did a pretty good job with it last week, just kinda got dead leg right there. I was about to say, I think he took a really bad angle and underestimated yeah. Book having the ability to run. <laughs> yes, I agree. So here's some there. I think this is just kind of this is something this is a third down on the on USS first drive. This is seems to me just like a newness of the offense and maybe not knowing exactly where you're supposed to go. So they're going to call a screen here. And somebody, I have to believe somebody messed up. And while it's easy to say when you see it like that, but either you're supposed to get a pin here and the tackle is going to pull around for this 
you know, this guy right here. So you got him there, him there, and now you got an alley, or he blocks him and he's got to pull around with his eyes looking back inside. So you kind of get neither of them do that. So right here, if you're doing like a push crack where he's pushed vertical and then comes a crack, and now he's coming for this guy, I think you have a pretty good play on, which was which would, I would guess would actually be the play call. But he doesn't go inside, and then his eyes are out here, so his eyes aren't inside there. That makes him so neither of them end up getting this block where you would you would have, I think, the tight end kicking this guy out back here and him kicking the guy out there. And now there's your alley to run through. Instead, we get this where neither of them gets blocked. He's got to try to cut and he slips and you don't get the first down. And I remember this a lot from the film rooms last year, just watching guys just not going to the correct. I mean, because theoretically, there is no correct block here, but there is a right block to make. And, and I think we saw that a lot last year with the offensive line. Anytime, you know, they had to get to the second level. It was always, I'm going to the area, not I'm going to the guy that yeah. I could be blocking. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's just, I think this was the scheme here. And if that is, you're giving yourself an alley. But like you said, there's still some confusion. They're not quite sure where to go. One of these guys, I'd imagine, messed up. I don't think they're just going to cut these guys loose totally. Mm -hmm. And a crack here, I think, is the call. And they're kind of switching responsibilities, which could have been a really good play. But no spring football, you know, limited practice time, that's going to happen. So here's the big run by Johnny Ford. So they're going to run like a counter look, pull these guys. Ford's going to go flat across. He's going to like arc outside. Then the quarterback is going to read the end there. So he's going flat. So the end, when he sees the pull, he squeezes down. So as soon as he squeezes down, and these guys, right, some, some coaches will teach linebackers just follow the pulling guards. Well, with this kind of stuff, you take yourself out of position. And then here's another kind of the same idea here. They're both probably taught block most dangerous. Well, it's the same guy. <laughs> the heat going to take him, but doesn't take him. And then, well, there's, if he took him, now you got a really good play. You know, luckily he makes him miss, but you know, it maybe he's maybe he can just hit it and doesn't have to cut, and maybe that one less cut he doesn't uh, fall down or something. But you know, just there's just little little misses, still mm -hmm. trying to get in the right spot, even on the big plays. And so here's a look at it from the normal view. This is a, a different play. This is with Kelly Joyner, but it's the same scheme. And then we're gonna pull, kick, wrap. These two guys are closing down, and you just trust your speed to get around the edge. I think we get a. I think you just gets a whole call here. The same idea. You've got leverage. Just pin him inside there. I'm not sure who the hold is on. But that's a good game. I think this one gets called back. But mm -hmm. same scheme, a lateral scheme that doesn't put a lot of pressure on your offensive line. And then if these guys stay back. Well, now you got two pullers coming to create a, a nice run lane for your quarterback. So good scheme, a choice, kind of a stretch counter read, good stuff. This wasn't able to quite execute a ton. Here's the fake punt. So, you know, I, we call it a fake punt, but really, you know, here, these are your two starting, these are your top two tight ends. That's your number one running back. I think that's one of your receivers. This is a guy that played quarterback last year. Your punter's out here, but he's not part of the play. So it's a fake punt, but it's really almost like a wildcat type play where you're just bringing in a different quarterback. And they window dress it with a punter, you know, to show the punter first, kind of simplify the look you're going to get from the defense. Because even if you, even if you were running safe, once they do this movement, you kind of get what you want, which is go route here. He's going to outside release, run a go route. He's going to block for a second, 
and get out to the flat, that's the guy they want to hit. So they're going to motion here, fake it, roll him out, probably trying to sell run, and then this guy's going to come off late. It happens late, and if the quarterback can keep his eyes downfield, you got a first down. So we'll run it one time full speed. You can see here the motion got all that movement. He's clearing this out. You can see, look, two eyes to him clearing that out. His back is turned with him, and now he's engaging the block, and he's going to slip out. So look at all the space out here. Look, he starts to slip it, slip him. He gets away from it, but this is where he's got to keep his eyes down. He's going to realize, okay, my, I have a throw to make right here. So this is the guy, the only guy that was covering that tight end. There's probably not anybody within 10 yards of him. So he's able just to keep his eyes down and throw it. You got you to gotta play there. It happened late because you kind of get a little bit of a hold here by the Notre Dame in here. He kind of grabs his face mask. But it's like right here, I just drop it to the guy. I'm in good shape. And you can see, maybe you can't see the screen shift up, but you can see here, they're pointing. They're pointing down there. Like, hey, throw it. He's open, but he doesn't throw it. So that's the one where it looks bad on the coaches, but it really was not a bad play call. And you can kind of limit the kind of defenses you're getting by throwing the punt team out there first and switching it up. Mm -hmm. Then here's the, the shot later in the game down the field. Lose Noah Johnson, really well thrown ball. So you saw he had a couple accuracy issues, but this is a really good throw. And that's Latrell Williams, who the last step really liked a lot. We've heard a lot of good things about him. And this is under duress right here. This is a really good throw. I mean, look at that placement. That's pretty much perfect, and especially with having to get it out of your hands so quickly. So there's some stuff. I mean, is maybe Latrell Williams could be your explosive receiver and take the top off of people. If you have that, it's going to help open up a lot of other things. Right now, they don't really have anybody people are threatened by. But that's a great throw, great catch. Looks like he gets two feet in, too. So that's pretty good stuff right there. And this is another big run later in the game. We talked about where else could you see Johnny Ford maybe. Well, I, I think you might see him in the slot, whether it's like this or – it's with another back in the backfield, but he gives you a definite different look on these jet sweeps. So reading right here, if he comes up field at all, give it, and now you got your speed and space. So there, there was some there was stuff done, but it just wasn't consistent enough and it really is, you're going to have problems, even if you execute it at a really high level, you're going to have problems beating Notre Dame just because of the talent level and the physicality level. I was about to say, they're a top five team for a reason. They yes. had high expectations coming into this year for a reason. Um, and as we kind of said on that, the podcast the other day, that game was not scheduled for the Saturday contest that we just no. watched. That game was scheduled for the next two games. Yeah. Um, you have, where, you'll have Notre Dame coming to Tampa, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Which is a whole lot better than a, uh, some other schools are getting so yes oh, that's thank you Seth no that's that's much much more informative and obviously like always you know it's 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 a lot more useful to see it from a from a coach's perspective so you can see what's actually happening rather than you know just seeing you know a loss or a game like that yeah and the, I like the fake punt was the, the big one I think that hopefully you kind of see what the idea was you can still argue the merits of it and calling it but I think if you see what the play call was, the creativity of it, the fact that it was open, um, hope, hopefully you kind of get to see that and maybe it little, adds a little nuance to the conversation about that because I see some people kind of act like it was the dumbest thing that's ever happened. And it's, it probably should have worked. So. Planted a seed and now every team's got to defend for it. That's right. Like we always say. Well, Seth, thank you as always for a wonderful film breakdown. And, uh, well, that's all we really have now. <laughs> no, now that we don't have a, a, a game this Saturday, so we'll uh, we'll come up with something to to be fun with. Yep. Well, 
we'll end it there. And uh, Seth, like I said, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for watching our film room. Uh, like I said, my, my name is Robert Stieg. Uh, follow me at, at Robert Stieg Life. Uh, Seth Varnador at Seth Varnador. And uh, here with the Daily Stampede at, S, nah, at Stampede SBN. Thank you as always. And go Bulls. Go Bulls.